Okay, so recently UC Tronics sent me this Raspberry Pi cluster case and I've been really impressed with it. I've been using it ever since. Uh, they've now sent me a new complete ultimate Raspberry Pi rack mount. The box is huge, as you can see. So let's see what's inside. So we have the metal top panel here and we have the bottom panel. And uh, these are obviously the bits that the Pi attaches to. And these are OLED screens. It comes with five of these PoE hats. Uh, you can see there's an SD card slot on this side. We've got the OLED connection, uh, another connection there for power. Uh, we've also got USB-C connector here as well. Underneath, we've got the fan, which is all connected already. And uh, there's some GPIO pin connectors and another connector here. Some very clear instructions and also some script on how to use the OLED display. Pretty much five times everything you see here, so nuts and bolts, power switch, little SD card adapter with ribbon cable, some standoffs, load of screws here, some thumb screws, uh, and they even give you a spare pack, which has got various little extra bits in there as well. I won't be using this supplied screwdriver because I have a better option here. So let's pop the power switch in first, slot that through, so that's nice and solid feeling. So on the PoE, you attach the standoffs first. That's the last one on. So that sandwiches together with the GPIO pins and the PoE hat, which is inside there. So I've fitted the SD card reader in the slot. You can see there's a ribbon cable that goes up and slots into here. Next, we need to pop the Pi into this casing. So there's feet underneath and we've got to go through the edge here, there you go. So when this is all flush, all of this should line up in the bottom. And I'm using the longer screws in here. And that's the last one in. So now we need to connect up the power, which goes into the back here. It's labelled power on the board. So that goes in there. Then we've got this cable for the OLED screen. So pop the first one in the back here, and then in the front. And that's it all connected up. With the casing, I don't plan to be using it with this because I don't have a cluster of pies. Um, but uh, all I've done is put two screws in the back for now. Uh, so one here and one over the other end, just to keep it stable. But obviously I'd put them all in if I was gonna use it properly. So I wanna make sure that these cables are away from the top bit and push that in. And now there's thumb screws to uh, basically go in the front to keep that in place. But I'm not going to do that um, because, as I say, I'm not going to use it in this cluster case. You can see the USB-C socket in the back there is still accessible through the back of the casing if you weren't using power over Ethernet. But I'm guessing if you're buying this, then you're going to be using power over Ethernet. So I'm guessing my internet switch isn't power over Ethernet compatible. I've never checked, but it was only a cheap one. So if I plug this in, yeah, nothing seems to happen so far. Let's try power. Yeah, nothing at all. Right, so I'm gonna to have to use USB-C to test this and test the fan and everything else. So let's shut down Ubuntu and uh, connect this up. So let's plug everything in. So Ethernet cable operating system is on this Samsung bar, which is Ubuntu. Keyboard. Analog jack is around the back, so um, sound-wise you'd have to take the sound from HDMI. I know that's not the point of these. HDMI, and then power in. So I haven't done anything about the OLED display yet, so let's just boot it up first of all. Yeah, that's booting up as normal. I can't hear the fan at all. God, it is on though. That's really quiet. I wouldn't have known it was on. That's quite impressive. Let's get my microphone down there. So very little noise coming from that. Okay, so if I scroll down through, uh, so display code, uh, and it does say for Raspbian OS or Raspberry Pi OS, so I think I'm gonna reboot in Raspberry Pi OS and uh, try it in that. Rather than mess around in Ubuntu and maybe have to make some changes, I think I'll just go with the one it's designed for. So let's put a SD card with Raspberry Pi OS on it. Give me a chance to try the SD card reader. So it's a spring-loaded SD card slot. Let's see if it will power up. I haven't powered it off at the mains. Okay, that's booting up, so the SD card looks like it's working fine. 
Okay, so I've got low voltage warning popped up. Uh, I am using USB-C rather than the power over Ethernet, but that's that's all I've got to try it with. Uh, so let's uh, do the text to get the screen working. Raspberry config. Uh, here we are. Enable disable automatic loading of I2C kernel module. It says to enable that. Yes. And I need to clone this and go to the location and compile the program and let's run it. Oh, the display's come on straight away. Let's switch cameras. There you go. So you can see it's given my IP address at the top and then various different bits of information disk, CPU usage, memory usage, and it just toggles through those settings. Very nice. At the bottom here, uh, you can have it automatically run when you start up your Pi. Okay, so thanks to UCtronics for sending me this to test. Uh, it's a really impressive piece of kit. I'll put a link in the description so you can have a look at it, but it would look very cool with all the displays lit up full of Pis. Okay, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.